Hello and thank you for watching this video today. Today we're going to talk about panel data and what you want to do with them. First of all, I assume from the point that you're watching this video, you just have finished merging your data in one sheet or just downloaded somewhere a data sheet and you're not sure if it's panel data at all, are they balanced or unbalanced. So I'm going to show you what you may want to do. I just created a, a panel data. Let's see if it's balanced or unbalanced. Let's just call it real quick a data sheet where we do see in year one, the year of the period of time it's from 2000 to 2002. Then we do have the IDs of the municipalities from column three. And just let me tell you something. If you do have official statistics, the IDs are already given from the, from the government. So, and this data sheet is just made up for educational purpose. So I can show you it. So I can show it real easy to you. And then we have uh, three variables that are ABC and this is just made up with some random numbers. But um, it doesn't matter at all because we can use it anyway, right? And what we're going to do first is we want to make sure that for all individuals, meaning in that case municipalities, all data for each year are available. And in this particular setup, if you do have, let's say, a time period of 10 years you want to investigate, it's highly unlikely that you have from the beginning balanced panel data because the obvious reason is that municipalities may merge together or have been merged in the past. And so they have just less observations. So your data sheet is automatically un balance in that case. But I'm going to show you what you may want to do. So let's just we uh, let's just we'll uh, quickly check if it's balanced or unbalanced. So we type in um, I just prepared it already. Um, XT set ID year and then we do get the output that the ID is unbalanced. If you want to switch the positions, then I can show you what happens. It's actually the same, right? So it shows you unbalance with gaps. Um, not a problem at all, depending on your setting, right? If you do want to affect, uh, investigate the causal effect on something different and you do not need balanced, panel data or panel data at all. It doesn't matter. You just need to know what to do next and which method you're going to apply. But in that case, it makes highly sense to create a balanced panel data because you have municipalities and otherwise it would be biased, maybe. Um, next is we, I show you what you may want to do. First of all, you sort the ID and then you type in browse again and then you already see, okay, we do have the municipality of St. Peter three times, Buchenbach three times and Stegen, so that's the problem. We only have it once in year 2000, meaning something happened. We do not know, we need to check that, but in that case, I assume that it's just merged with another municipality, right? So we know that for sure that it depends on Stiegel. Maybe if you have a bigger data set, there are more municipalities, but for that it's real short. I just made it up to show it to you. And we see that we have three years, name it 2001, 2002 and 2000, 2000, 2001 and 2002, sorry. And if you want to be sure, you type in some year and then we see it on the min and max values. Um, after you checked your pr uh, data, you type in by ID and then you generate a new variable. Let's name it count and that counts 
backwards from the last year of your time period um, through your data meaning that we do see here in the this new column we see we see the variable count and it shows you how many times it it's the municipality is in your data sheet so for st peter it's three times and for stegen it's one time meaning it makes sense that it's three times because you investigate three years right so now here comes the fun part you just drop if the count is less than three and then it deletes the municipal all municipalities that uh, has less than three observations and after oh we just can quickly look and we see um Stegen is gone, right? So, and then the next part is you just make sure that it's now balanced. And that's pretty much it. Now you have a strongly balanced panel data. And I assure you that it may run through all of your data sheets in this way. So that's pretty much for today. Thank you for watching this video. I just, I just came up with it because I was asked quite frequently and I hope it helps you. Thank you.